Kingston is back with a brand new line of SSDs that propose some insanely good value. Good afternoon and welcome to Turbo Tools Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese, the four-piece variety of Walkie Triple XL. And I've got the new line of Kingston Fury Renegade SSDs. I, I really do like their naming conventions. They come up with some very cool gamery kind of stuff, don't they? And it's actually, it's not cringe, like a lot of the, the brands and stuff that try to do that. And it looks even cool, even the packaging and stuff, it looks Fury, you know? It's like, ah, it's, it's, I like it. I like the style, I like the finish, product finish, and I especially like the price versus performance. So, what do you get in the box? Well, you just get some pretty normal NVMEs. The NV2 is particularly basic and straightforward as well. Even the uh, cover over there is covering all the RCs and stuff. So you'd have to peel that sticker off in order to get direct contact on there. Not that you really are gonna need it as you'll see with the testing though. Then we have the sort of mid-range Renegade, which has been, I think, renamed to KC3000. Um, that is going to be the heat sinkless version of this. Well, I say heat sinkless, it does have the, the pad on top over here is a solid little piece of aluminium. So it basically has like direct contact heat spreader built into it, same way as like a CPU would have. So you can, which is what I did, just slap the heat sink directly on top of here with the thermal pad. Then we have the centerpiece, the Fury Renegade itself, which is super nicely finished. It has a really beefy heatsink on it, which if you don't have one on your motherboard will be more than enough. As you'll see by my testing, they don't actually really thermally throttle. So this is more for if you're using it in like very extreme, like high ambient temperatures and stuff. All of my testing has been done between like 15 and 20 degrees Celsius because it is the middle of winter now here in South Africa uh, as we head into June now, the end of May. Yeah, it's getting a little bit cold here. So you can take some of it with a pinch of salt. And, and in general, I would say putting in a, a heat spreader on your NVMe is going to be the better way to do things. So with that in mind, before we get into performance testing, a user complained that we didn't show the installation process. So here's that. All silliness aside, I hope you understand why I didn't include that in the video before because there's nothing really to show or going on over there. They literally just slot in and it's one screw and the SSD NVMe is ready to go. Then you just activate the drive normally, which is something that I will be showing you guys how to do in the future because I've realized a lot of you don't know how to do that as well. So that will become a Turbo Tortoise tutorial <laughs> in the future. But for these three drives, let's talk about performance. NV2 with or without the heatsink, it made almost no difference. The real thing, the real thing here is to compare it against a really good Gen 3 NVMe and see how it punches against something like that. Because that's what this is. It's trying to be a good budget value in Gen 3 NVMe. And they've pulled it off, honestly, in a very strange way. I am kind of perplexed at that write speed. The read speed is bad. And especially to go from Q8TA to Q32T1, there's usually a noticeable performance difference between those two layers. And they were dead heat on this drive, which is like confusing. But if you look at the write cycle, it absolutely thumps the E2000, which is a good drive. It's a very good Gen 3 NVMe Mahic Vision uh, E2000. I've basically had it since launch as well. So it is a little bit older, but it's still giving me the same performance that I got out of the box when it was brand new. So a brand like gen 3 peak of gen 3 versus an entry level you know new gen 3 this has faster write cycles so for reading it's going to be worse but writing is going to be better so the idea for you is os and games and stuff will load up a little bit slower but if you're using it for media and for writing data too and doing video and stuff it'll actually be better, especially if you're doing pictures and you like, for instance, you're doing 3D and you need to capture a lot of very small images uh, that you then build your scene from frame by frame. I know because we've done this before with Maya in our company. Um, when you do that, it's better if you have something that can handle small files a lot faster, which is what this will do. So it's actually like good for Adobe and 3D and design and not 
as great as the others for gaming. But it also comes through at one of the cheapest price points, 1,000 Rand for the one TV and then 1,700 Rand for the two TV for those two series. So that two TV is pretty much the best price versus performance NVMe on the store as far as value goes, just to get like value. Then we, then we look at the other two. We have these two, which we're gonna kind of compare side by side because they're basically actually exactly the same. The actual physical drives and stuff don't differ that much. It's just a heatsink or not included. The price point is very much in line with the rest of the market. One and a half for the heatsink included version, 1,200 for the 500 gig non-included. And this is Gen 4 speed. And as you'll see by the speed, it's more of the same. Slower reads, but better writes. And I don't understand why it does that. However, both of these were still comparable or better than that new A data that I just tested. And that's one of the best tested NVMEs I've got. Even the Corsair MP600 Pro XT was slower than now this Fury. So this is actually better bang for buck. This is better value for money. I've also done these tests with four gig file sizes and I ran two back to back for this guy because I couldn't take the heatsink off. Um, it's warranty void if you do take the heatsink off of this one. So make sure you buy the one with no heatsink on so you don't have to void your warranty if you want to use the heatsink on your motherboard. Don't do that to yourself. Just buy the one without the heatsink included because their performance is practically identical. All of this is very, very good news, especially if you are a Kingston fan. They were always like punching up there with Corsair for me. And it was sad that the RAM and the HyperX and stuff sort of fell off and became a little bit unreliable, et cetera, et cetera. And I was worried for them as a brand. And it was kind of like a heart soul moment because they've been with us for an incredibly long time. And this is a comeback to form. This is what we expect to see Kingston. And you've honestly knocked it out of the park. I absolutely love these this range. I like that it's also slightly niche and it's got a little bit of a different purpose, but still comes through with insane value. You guys have somehow checked multiple check boxes in niches that aren't really consistently checked. So a hell of a good job for that. The build quality is fantastic. The finish looks good. And the fact that they don't thermal throttle even without a, a heatsink on them, albeit, you know, in an open environment where there's not a lot of heat and stuff inside of the system. So take that with a pinch of salt. If you have it in a system that has a lot of heat and components, like high-end components, like, you know, fat boy GPUs at full chat, you know, and uh, 12th or 13th gen R9 or something like that, it's probably going to get warm, but then your board will have a heatsink. So you'll just be able to slap it underneath it and then not worry. But even without a heatsink, they tested really well. And normally I do get throttling. Even my heat synced chips, my heat pressures run out of uh, buffer at like 40 gig. So if I did the same test, there would be noticeable performance degradation by what, the 10th test. And I ran some of these back to back. So they buffer everything. Everything just seems to be working incredibly well. So good job, Kingston. Thank you so much for that. For you, the viewer, hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side.